Eh, buon pomeriggio a tutti, eh, il mio nome è Tommaso Volpe, sono il direttore Formula 1 per Infinity e Guy Richard è l'account la, eh, manager per Infinity in Infinity Red Bull Racing. Eh, L'evento di oggi è per, eh, stato organizzato grazie alla collaborazione con l'Università per promuovere uno dei migliori progetti che abbiamo messo insieme eh, Infinity ed Infinity Red Bull Racing che è l'Infinity Performance Engineering Academy. E, come vedrete vi spiegheremo mh, brevemente, io vi spiegherò brevemente l'origine della partnership tra Infinity e Infinity Red Bull Racing e perché abbiamo deciso di sviluppare questo progetto che ripeto è, uno delle attività, è una delle attività più interessanti che facciamo insieme e poi Guy eh, spiegherà un po' meglio qual è l'opportunità per le persone che verranno selezionate attraverso questo progetto qual è nel concreto l'opportunità in termini di, di lavoro fianco a fianco con gli ingegneri in Formula 1 e che immagino sia una delle cose più interessanti che un ingegnere possa fare se, se è appassionato di motorsport e automotive e, è una coincidenza che io sia italiano e in realtà lavoro a Hong Kong dove è la sede di Infinity e, spendo altri 10 secondi su Infinity e, probabilmente è un brand che per voi non è così conosciuto perché eh, il brand è stato lanciato quasi 30 anni fa in, negli Stati Uniti dove ha un grande successo e poi è stato portato in, in Cina, in Russia, Medio Oriente e, e poi in Europa in Europa stiamo crescendo tantissimo negli ultimi anni e, mh, non siamo ancora così famosi come vorremmo essere, come saremo sicuramente e, ma stiamo crescendo è un caso che io sia italiano, quindi faccio questa introduzione in italiano perché sicuramente aiuta, ma poi la presentazione in inglese. In ogni caso potete chiedermi qualsiasi cosa in italiano ovviamente. Ok, grazie. <coughs> well, why we are here? <laughs> I suppose the first reason is that we are all, and you are even more than I am, passionate about engineering and design. You are all here because you study a lot, and the professor told us that you spend nights also studying engineering, so I'm sure this is because you have a strong passion uh, behind it. And uh, the second thing is that, obviously, as you know perfectly, uh, Formula One is becoming more and more relevant uh, to automotive. It has always been like this, but in recent years it's becoming even more uh, because of the hybrid power unit. But not just that, but obviously the hybrid power unit is something that many people talk about. And the other reason why we organized this event is because we wanted to show what is the relationship in between Infinity Motor Company and Infinity Red Bull Racing. Um, i suppose after my introduction you know perfectly who both are, not just Infinity Red Bull Racing. <laughs> and um, finally, obviously, we want to explain you how the Infinity Performance Engineering Academy works and how you can apply if you are interested. And uh, I hope that at the end of the presentation all of you will be interested. Well, Infinity Motor Company. Uh, first of all, we are part of the Renault-Nissan Alliance, which is the fourth biggest uh, automotive group in the world. Uh, we are the premium brand uh, of the group. Uh, we, we are owned directly by Nissan, but obviously we are part of the, all, the alliance, and we are the premium brand of the alliance. Uh, we produce premium uh, products. Uh, at the moment, we produce in Japan, uh, United States, and China, uh, accordingly to what I was saying before, that mm, these are our first markets. Uh, but we are very soon opening a, a new production plant in Mexico and even more importantly, especially for this project, in the UK. We are actually already uh, pre-producing the Q30 in the UK. By the end of this year, we will have the first cars coming out from the production line. Yeah, sorry. I didn't want to put too much information about Infinity, just to <laughs> show who we are, but just to summarize the reason why we are different from other brands, our positioning, as marketeers say, is uh, the technology innovation, uh, pretty much focused on the driving experience and focused on the driver. So I just mentioned some of the uh, world-first innovations that we launched 
in the market before other competitors and for which we are very popular in the US and China. So one is the round view monitor, the lane departure warning, the, the blind spot intervention, the predictive, predictive forward collision warning and the direct adaptive steering. The last one, just to give you an example, has been fine-tuned by Infinity Red Bull Racing, by their drivers actually. So the Formula One drivers uh, three years ago were involved in the fine-tuning of the DAS, which is now available on the Q50, the product that you saw outside. Well, I suppose that in Modena I don't need to explain what Formula One is, and we can jump this slide. I suppose that we are all very popular with the sport. So the only thing that is, is very important for us to, to, to underline every time is that it's definitely the pinnacle of engineering, not just motorsport and entertainment, but engineering. And for an automotive company, this is crucial, and this is the very reason why we started this partnership with Infinity Red Bull Racing, the opportunity to share engineering knowledge. Sorry, again. So, how we started this partnership? We started in 2011, was the first year, so obviously we started as a commercial sponsor to test the sport, to test the relationship with the team, and obviously everything went very well because in 2013 we became title partner and vehicle performance partner. This led us in a, to a number of projects that we did together, and uh, one of which, as I said, is the DIS development. The Q50 itself, not just the DIS technology, was uh, developed together uh, with the involvement of the two Formula One drivers uh, at that time, one of whom uh, lives very close to here now, and, um, and he was involved in the testing of the product. So this was another project. We also developed a prototype based on the Q50, a truck uh, car, so no road legal car. Um, we haven't produced it because uh, we are studying the product portfolio, understanding if it makes sense from the commercial point of view, but the prototype was developed last year together with Infinity Red Bull Racing, and uh, we learned a lot on how to improve performance on our current cars, making them even more performing on track. And finally, the Infinity Performance Engineering Academy is, as I said before, is probably at the moment the most important project on the technical collaboration. But what it is, very simply, uh, we considered it, and I'm pretty sure it is, the world's, the world's largest and only talent search for undergraduate engineering students who work across Formula One and automotive sectors. I might be wrong, but I don't think there is any other stage where you can work for in, in the same stage for a Formula One team and an automotive company. I might be wrong, but not that I know. Uh, the opportunity is to, to work with uh, Infinity, so with the global automotive engineering professionals for three, four months, and after that, uh, to move to Infinity Red Bull Racing. So having the chance to work for seven, eight months uh, in a Formula One engineering team. Um, why we cre created it? First of all, because as I said before, we started our technical relationship with the team on other projects, and then we wanted to move it further, starting from the talent. So we wanted to make the technical relationship even deeper, and we wanted to invest on human capital. We wanted to also recruit and train engineers who in the future might be working again for Infinity Red Bull Racing or, and Infinity after the stage and after they graduate. So it's, it's, it's a deeper way to, to, to interpret our relationship with Infinity Red Bull Racing, starting from the beginning. So just a video to describe it. Infinity's partnership with Infinity Red Bull Racing is about showing our passion, our performance, the way that we work and bringing young engineers into the academy is a way of demonstrating that. Last year we got 1500 applications and we were able to select three fantastic candidates. When Adrian knew he announced my name it was mostly shock. And then sort of about five minutes later it was an elation and he sort of 
couldn't believe it, you had to pinch yourself really. It was one of the most intense, overwhelming, exciting feelings I've ever had. This year we wanted to give the engineers an opportunity to work in Infinity Road Car Engineering as well so that they, as young engineers, can experience both sides, the race car side and the road car side. That transfer between both Infinity and Infinity Red Bull Racing is, is what we're trying to you know, really push forward. So it's really an opportunity to bring the two together and transfer all of that technology from one to the next. Where else can you go and experience eight months of Formula One engineering, four months of road car engineering? It's a two-way street really between Infinity and Red Bull Racing. This year it's bigger, it's better, we've got places for five undergraduates. If you're considering applying, you should absolutely go for it. There's no downside. My advice would be to be yourself, bring your confidence and your passion to this game. To show who you are and what you can do. We are looking for the highest caliber engineers so if you're sitting there now thinking, it could be me, then we're waiting for your application form. Well, the three guys that at the moment are part of the academy, uh, the three guys that you saw in the video, this is just briefly to show you the kind of profile they had. Uh, I won't go in details, but they all are uh, engineering students like you are with little work experience as well, like I suppose most of you have. This uh, university works a lot with the industry, as I discussed, and uh, so I'm sure that you all have uh, potentially the right profile to apply for, for this experience. And um, what I said before is a, a unique opportunity this year, even more than last year, because by the end of this year, in 2015, we will start the production of the Q30 in England our first product produced in Europe, specifically in England. And the people that we are recruiting will be involved in this production. So they will also have the opportunity to be involved in the very first Infinity products produced in England, in Europe. So in 2015, the program is looking for uh, five different roles that we define together with Infinity Red Bull Racing. Two vehicle design, two for vehicle dynamics, uh, sorry, one for vehicle dynamics, one for electronics, and one for aerodynamics. Uh, this doesn't mean that you have to choose one of these at the moment of the recruitment, of course, but it's, it's gonna be us uh, deciding who is the best for which position once we have defined the five uh, winners. Who can enter? Any undergraduates uh, at any time, uh, as long as you are not graduate <laughs> when you apply. Um, obviously, you should be studying a relevant degree and track for a strong result. We don't have a fixed number, but definitely uh, an average uh, score of 24, 25 of above is definitely considered a strong result, especially in Italy, I can tell, because it's more difficult than uh, in, other, in other countries. Um, obviously, candidates must be both uh, a resident and a student in the uh, European Union, and you must be fluent in English, obviously, because you will be working in England. So, very important, we say five uh, winners, five candidates, but uh, just to clarify, our research is global, which means we identified five different areas from which we will have one winner. So we we'll have one winner in Europe. So people applying from Italy will compete with people applying from other countries in Europe for one position. So you can see it's very tough. And but you, sorry? Yeah, it's very challenging, but you can appreciate it's a quite unique opportunity. As I said before, I'm not aware of other placements like this uh, in a Formula One team and automotive company. And then we have United States, Saudi Arabia, Russia, and China. This is the package. So uh, is, uh, there is a salary. So um, there is a monthly salary which is aligned with uh, the, the monthly salary uh, in the UK for this level of experience which I can tell is higher than any stage that you might, do, might be doing in Italy. And uh, you have also two months premium started accommodation to help. 
and obviously we will support across any kind of uh, admin process, including visa, even if you don't need, obviously, visa for the UK. Uh, flights to and from the UK for, 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 for at the beginning, and uh, we will have also shared vehicles, Infinity vehicles or Nissan, uh, because obviously the factory is um, in the countryside, so you need a vehicle to, to move, and we will support with this. Where and how to apply is very simple. I mean, if you go on uh, academy.infinity.com, it's even easier than uh, whatever I can tell you, but <laughs> it's very easy. Uh, there is a form that you need to fill in and uh, send your CV via email. Then you might be requested to send in a second stage a short video um, because the, the recruitment agency will select on the CV uh, we'll, we'll screen a certain number of CVs and then we will ask you uh, to produce a short video. It doesn't need to be an Oscar winning video as we said on the Q&A but just a video explaining, explaining why you want to do it, a motivational video if you want and obviously this is important also for, to understand uh, the, the, the quality of your English which is needed. And uh, as you can see, the assessment is based on a very standard way of uh, assessing um, candidates. So obviously your academic and professional credentials, um, the video submission, uh, which will be analyzed by the recruitment agency. There will be a Skype interview in the second moment for the people screened. And uh, there will be a, a short list and then there will be a regional final uh, in England uh, for the European market. And uh, in this regional final, we'll have 10 finalists. So the whole recruitment is done, uh, you don't need to move basically, <laughs> is done via internet or Skype. And then the 10 finalists will be invited to England at our expenses, obviously, uh, for a final event, uh, out of which we'll have the winner for the European market. This is another video to encourage you to apply. <laughs> Hello young engineers out there. Just want to wish you good luck in this year's Infinity Performance Engineering Academy. Engineers are important in a Formula One team. You know, I work very closely with them and it's a very strong relationship we have. You know, I relay all the information I feel in the car and then they do their work and build the quickest car possible. It's a pretty high pressure job and they've sometimes got to make some pretty big decisions in a short amount of time. You spend a lot of time together so you need to get along. It's business, but I mean, you need to be mates as well. There's so many variables in Formula One, so many changes you can make on a car. I wouldn't be where I am today without a team of great engineers. So if you want the ultimate work placement, go online and join the program. Okay, I think this was it. And just to summarize, it's really a unique experience. Now, uh, I don't want to convince you, <laughs> but it's really, really a unique experience. Again, I work in the automotive business and I'm not aware of any other kind of placement of this kind and uh, where you can share the passion of working close to engineers in a Formula One team and then the level of uh, R&D developed by an automotive company which is massive because obviously a big corporation produces a level of R&D that a team cannot. A team is focused on the solutions to win week by week but an automotive company is focused on massive engineering studies and R&D, R &D. so it's really a unique uh, experience. Now I leave the, the microphone to, to Guy who can excite you with more interesting stuff about what you will be doing together with the Formula One team and uh, thank you for your attention. Well, good afternoon, guys. Um, thank you for having me. I'm well aware that I'm in Ferrari heartland here, so I'm over enemy lines slightly, but I do appreciate you giving me the time of day. And as Tommaso said, what I'd like to do is just talk a bit more about the team, uh, talk a bit more about our engineering challenges and what we're looking for from applicants to, to help us solve those. 
Um, so what I want to start with is a quick film to show you a bit about our team ethos uh, and how we, uh, how we like to position ourselves over the ten and a half years we've been racing. Now I know of course that you guys aren't really interested in the glitz and the glamour, it's all about the engineering for you, but um, I just wanted to show you a bit about the team and, um, and give you an appreciation now for what it is that goes into those cars that go on track. Um, now I know you all know a lot about the automotive industry and the motorsport industry as it is, but um, hopefully I'll give you a few more details as we go today. And As I mentioned, just put, put those placements that we have available in a bit more context. Now, that is a kind of a condensed history of our short 10 years, and our mission as a team is, is pretty simple. It's the same as most Formula One teams. We are here to race, and we're here to win, but as you've seen, we like to think that we do things a little bit differently, and the first thing I would say about the program is we are after applicants who will embrace that spirit um, and the, the spirit of doing things differently. Um, and I think Christian Horner puts it best when he says that Infinity Red Bull Racing is not just a job for us, it's a way of life and that's the first thing we would ask of all applicants that you do really commit yourself to this program because it's an amazing opportunity that Infinity are giving everyone. So a little bit about our short history and again I'd like to apologise to all the Ferrari fans. Um, it's been just over 10 years for us now but a very successful one. Um, the, the success we've had in such a short space of time is, is pretty much unprecedented in Formula One. We were the, um, only the third team in the history of the sport to win four double world championships consecutively um, and that within just being in the sport for, for just six years. We've won just over a quarter of the races we've entered uh, and we've accrued almost 3,000 championship points in that time. So you know, we're really proud of what we've achieved but obviously for us it's all about going forward and, and having more success in the future. Now our team, you've seen a bit of, of Mr. Ricardo already, um, obviously he has some Italian heritage so there's a, a relevance to you guys but he is a, an incredible guy, he came to the sport as uh, I guess not a rookie in the sport but a rookie for Infinity Red Bull Racing last year, uh, had three Grand Prix wins out of pretty much nowhere, he was the only guy not driving a Mercedes to win a Grand Prix last year and he's already established himself as one of the foremost drivers on the grid and he is joined by Daniel Kvyat, our new Russian rocket uh, who is having a bit of a difficult time with things at the moment. The package isn't quite where we'd like to be, but we're really excited about what he's going to bring to the team in the future. And we think we've got one of the most exciting driver lineups in Formula One for you to work with next year. Now, our team leaders, people who probably don't need too much of an introduction either, we have Christian Horner, our team principal, and he was installed as team principal when we very first started racing uh, back in 2004, 2005. And he was the younger team principal in the history of Formula One at that time. Uh, it's a bit of a theme of our, of our past that we like to have a, a go on, on youngsters and, and really give young people a chance to come into the team and that's reflected by the support we have from Infinity, in the Infinity Performance Engineering Academy this year. Now Adrian Newey, a guy who I'm almost certain you're all aware of, he's the most successful designer in the history of, of motorsport. As it says here, 
10 constructor championships, championships and over 150 Grand Prix wins. Someone I'm sure you're all very keen to emulate and someone who I'm also sure you're very keen to work with next year. Now those guys are supported by our race team. So our race team are these 60 individuals who travel around the world and basically whose job it is to assemble and race the car and get the most out of the package that we have sent to every track every single time we go racing. Now that is a hard limit that's set by the FIA, so we're capped with those guys and they're generally the same race in, race out, but our operation goes far beyond that. We have a factory staff of over 650 people back in the UK whose job it is to design, manufacture, test and assemble Formula One cars and, and that's the reason we're here today to talk to you guys to become part of that team. Now we have our main operation that you see there in, in Milton Keynes in the UK, which is around an hour north of London. We have a wind tunnel based a, a couple of miles away in Bedford. And of course we have remote users worldwide. Our calendar this year is 19 races across five continents, so it's a truly global platform with a viewership of over two billion people. So as a platform to get your, your engineering prowess seen, um, it's pretty much unrivaled. Now I'm sure you're all aware of the, of the changes we've had in regulation recently. The move from normally aspirated V8 engines to hybrid engines, V6 turbocharged hybrid engines we have now, we have had since 2014. And that's one of the other reasons we're working so closely with Infinity now, because there's such a relevance to all the automotive industry and motorsport. Indeed, the automotive industry were key in the drive to move to hybrid technology because they see the relevance to what they're doing day by day. And the Q50 hybrid you've seen out there is using the very same systems that you can see animated in front of you here. So that crossover uh, and that kind of application technology on both sides is something that we are really keen to harness because we understand that as a team, that is the future of Formula One. We need to make our technology relevant to road cars in order to survive and flourish. And the likes of Infinity recognise that that is where the, the exciting ideas are coming from and where all the engineering talent is. And I'm sure you guys know about this, this power unit already. We've gone from one normally aspirated power unit to a power unit with six different components to it. Your ICE, your MGUK, your MGUH, your power store, your turbocharger and your control electronics unit, which are now interdependent, um, so all these engine penalties that you see may be coming up for us. Um, it's all about how we manage these components to basically be one package, but you know, these engines are incredible things. I should mention that even though Mercedes are very good at making them, which we don't like, um, they are incredible. We're talking about the same performance as the V8s with around 30% less fuel consumption. In fact, our track times now are generally lower than we had under the V8, so the technology is brilliant and, and we think it's probably here to stay. Now, as Tommaso mentioned, the challenge that we have in Formula One is quite different to that of the automotive industry. The automotive industry is about obtaining perfection over you know, six months, maybe a year's time, long-term R&D. And for us, it's about speed of development. It's about getting the newest and greatest technology to the track as soon as possible and certainly faster than our rivals. Uh, so this is a kind of view of, of our timescales as a team. So you're looking at a clean sheet of paper to a fully designed and developed car within five months looking at a new concept that you design potentially when you're with us, being on the car within weeks, maybe even within a week period. A fault resolution at a track within days, you know, if we see something that's not working on a Friday, we'll have it addressed by the Saturday. We're talking about full car simulations in hours with the supercomputing power that we have available to us. Um, expert advice from fa track to, to factory, thanks to hardline connectivity between every track in the world and our factory in minutes. And thanks again to that connectivity, we're talking about adjusting strategy and tactics in seconds. In fact, when we're working in Australia at the Australian Grand Prix and connecting back to the UK, we have a latency period of 0.5 seconds between there and, and us, the other side of the world. That live support is with us at all times. It's an incredible thing. And the last thing I want to talk about there is, is pit stops. So we, as a team, have the world record for the fastest pit stop of all time, which was 1.923 seconds, which we're very proud of. And I'd like to talk a bit more about that now. So first of all, here's what 1.923 seconds in a pit stop looks like. Mark Webber prepares to come in. Just shows you the, uh, the way that Lotus is kind on its tyres. So Webber now stopping and Sebastian Vettel just making his way round the final corner as Grosjean carries on in the lead of this race. It's impossible they put two rear tyres on the thing, does it? 2.3 seconds for Mark Webber. Is that... Is that 
So those guys had it timed at 2.3. Uh, we looked at the telemetry and, and it was 1.923 seconds, which was you know, great for us because we've worked really hard at that. We had the guys training twice a day, every single day when they're in the factory, doing physical performance programs themselves to work on their core stability and their coordination, these kind of things as well. But what I want to mention on this is the amount of technology that goes into a pit stop. So I'm going to show you a different angle of it this time. <laughs> Now what you see is 18 guys in perfect harmony doing their job really well, but what you don't see is the technology that's built into that pit stop rig by our engineers back in Milton Keynes. So it used to be that when all four guys engaged the wheel nut for the second time when the wheel is on, they would put their hands up and a lollipop would release the car. As of around 18 months ago, we now have a, a system in which the car is released automatically. So as soon as the wheel nut is engaged, the, as soon as all four wheel nuts are engaged, the front and rear jacks drop automatically and the traffic light goes green and the car is released. So that is all automated and that's done by our electronics team back in the factory. And there's also an element of design in that as well, working with wheel nuts. We designed nine different wheel nuts over the course of last season to make that process as efficient as possible. And we never stop pushing in these areas. So you know, even something as simple as a pit stop, which you see on television, has a huge amount of work going into it in the factory, not just by our mechanics, but by engineers, by electronics, uh, by people in design, system design, looking at all these kind of things. And you know, that's just one challenge of, of many that we have. And that's what that looks like if you're the guy on the gun. It's, it's pretty impressive stuff. But now I want to talk to you a bit more about our engineering challenges and the placements which we've allocated in the Affinity Performance Engineering Academy this year um, and what those are going to look like through the year. So first of all, vehicle design. So as you guys are well aware, Formula One cars are complex. We're talking around 100,000 components, 7,500 of which are entirely unique. And we're talking about a car that is constantly evolving by as many as 1,000 design changes every single week. So we have a prototype which is changing every single time we hit the track. Not only are we having to design these components, we're also having to design the jigs, the fixtures, the tooling to create these components. So actually getting a car designed in the first instance is a massive challenge. And the first two placements we have in vehicle design will be looking at systems, mainly fuel, water, air, the internal systems of the car, and working at how we pull this package together. Because every two weeks we have to go racing. We have to take the components that we have and get the best package together. So managing that evolution and making sure we can go racing is a, a real challenge that we have and making sure the whole car comes together as one cohesive unit um, is also key for us. We have challenge in aerodynamics. Obviously aerodynamics is a, a key part of a Formula One cars and, and CFD is, is a massive part of that. And we run hundreds of simulations, if not thousands of simulations in CFD every single week. Now CFD for us uh, is a highly automated process, mainly with our proprietary systems. We write a lot of software ourselves to, to automate that and take resource off designers, but simulation is, is huge for us. And we're talking about hundreds of separate processes which are all automated and managed using hundreds and tens of different apps. The amount of data we create is enormous. You're talking about tens of terabytes of data, 180 megabytes generally every single second created by us. It's, an enormous amount of data we're creating. That's why we've got around three or four petabytes of storage on site. And obviously that has to be supported by the wind tunnel. The way we push the car forward aerodynamically is taking CFD, complementing it with wind tunnel, and basically making sure those results are borne out on track. So whoever it is that comes and works with us on the aerodynamic placement will need to be involved in calibrating those results and making sure that CFD is representative of what we're seeing in the wind tunnel. Now, the wind tunnel itself, as I mentioned, is based over in Bedford, a few miles away from us. Uh, the car is 60%, which is standardized across Formula One, and has around 400 lines of telemetry. So it gives us huge amounts of data which we can look at, and analyzing and interpreting that data will be a key part of the aerodynamic placement which we have next year. Other challenges that we have are in FIA, FEA, making sure that the chassis, the safety cell, and all the supporting components are safe and are up to the stresses and strains of, of being on a Formula One car. And now, of course, that's important because driver safety is, is paramount in Formula One. The sport is now safer than it ever has been before, but any sport you drive at 200 miles an hour clear, clearly carries inherent risks. 
So minimising those risks for the drivers and making sure that we do so as much as possible in the virtual environment is really important. And of course, to complement that, we will do crash testing to make sure we homologate the car to FIA regulations. And again, to make sure that the work we're doing in simulation is being borne out in the physical environment. And I'm about to show you an example now of why that's important and real, uh, a true life to life example of, of just how good safety cells and chassis now are. So this was a few years ago now, uh, a pretty nasty shunt in Valencia, which you may well remember. Uh, this is Mark Webber in 2010. So pretty nasty. Um, obviously that's the onboard camera. We have a new uh, different shot of it now from a slightly different angle. Now that steering wheel costs in the region of 40,000 euros, um, but we'll forgive him on that occasion, that was a pretty big collision. Um, but the very fact that he's able to get out of the car and throw that steering wheel just shows how incredible the protection that he has from this chassis is. Um, so a lot of what we'll be doing in the placement is making sure that we are ensuring safety, but obviously not at the compromise of performance. It's always balancing performance and reliability, the key things that we always do at Infinity Red Bull Racing that every Formula One team has the challenge of doing. So, just one more time for good measure. Now that's impressive engineering in action that he's able to do that after such a big collision. Other challenges we have are in manufacturing. Um, whoever works, again, on the design side of things will be expected to work closely with our manufacturing capabilities and make sure that they are producing components in the correct way and that what we are designing is, is born out in reality again. So overseeing the whole process will be critical to that. And again, the reason that's so positive is because it gives you such a good overview of the whole side of our business. And, and manufacturing for us is, a, is an important part of what we do. We track over a million jobs per year. Uh, and that's a significant amount of car when you, uh, when you consider we only really make five chassis and go racing 19, maybe 20 times. Um, and obviously this is because we're dealing in prototype parts. So every time we're manufacturing it, maybe we've never manufactured that part before. So having designers who can oversee that whole process is critical. So again, we're looking for people with an all-round interest in the process and who will care about this sort of things and want to see their project through from, from design all the way through to completion. Another challenge that we have is, is quality. We're talking about every single component that we have being measured maybe two to three times via laser scanner in its life process. And we're talking these Leica machines, for instance, are accurate to around four microns. A human hair has run 110 microns in width. So this is really impressive stuff. And it gives you an idea of some of the tolerances that we're working to in Formula One and just how important it is that we get that accuracy right at all times. So these guys, if you come and join us, will be watching over your shoulder to make sure that everything is right, I promise you. And obviously the challenge that we have also is in assembly. So making sure the components that we designed to within four microns actually fit together in the way they should do. And when you have 100,000 components coming together to be one car, you're always going to have challenges in that. So that's an important part of the process as well. And of course, the ultimate challenge we have is, is going racing. As I mentioned, every couple of weeks we have to take our car to some far, far flung parts of the world. We're racing in Monaco next weekend, then Canada two weeks later. And not only do we have to have our car there and all our infrastructure there, we have to have an updated version, which is you know, fit for Monaco, fit for Canada. You have Monaco, which is, a, as you guys are aware, a high downforce street circuit, which is a very, very different challenge to Canada, which is very much based on straight line speed. So making sure we have the right package of both those races and that we've evolved the car effectively in between those two is, is really important. And making sure we use those races those races as tests, making sure we use those practice sessions as efficiently as possible to gather as much data from the car as we can and, and learn about the car as we go. And obviously the way we do that is measuring the car. The car has around 150 lines of telemetry from it, which is giving us data constantly on thousands of parameters. So this is a car that is living and breathing, it's telling us how it's performing and making sure we can monitor that effectively. Again, looking at our vehicle dynamics team, making sure these guys understand the car and, and understand how the car can work and can be tweaked is really important. 
And obviously, the car is always changing conditions. It's never in the same phase twice. It might be getting hotter. The fuel loads are decreasing, so the car is getting lighter. Tire degradation is increasing. So making sure we're always staying on top of that and we un understand how to optimize the car at all times is really important. So in terms of vehicle dynamics, that's the kind of thing you guys will be looking at. And obviously, another challenge is, is setup. So as I mentioned, we may do as many as 1,000 design changes every single week to the car. And that may mean hundreds of thousands of different setup options. So making sure we optimize the setup every single time based on what the drivers are feeding back, based on the telemetry, based on simulated data is really important. And again, this is vehicle dynamics in action. This is the kind of thing that um, Eric LaRoche, who's currently with us, is, is looking at in the simulator every single day. And this is uh, one of the simulators that we have. Uh, this is the kind of thing that Eric is doing day in, day out, not only for, for younger, young driver training, which is important, and driver conditioning, which is important, but the simulator that we have is, is, is genuinely a research tool. It's used to verify the things that we see um, at the track and add to the data that we gather during the daytimes on the track. We'll probably run the simulator overnight to, to complement that and to make setup options based on the data we've seen and gathered from the track in the day. In fact, Sebastian Buemi, who won the Formula E at the weekend, it's no surprise to me because he actually set more laps in Monaco in the simulator last year than either of our drivers did on track, which just shows you how important it is that we have the simulator complementing what it is that we do on track. And ultimately, the challenge that we have is evolving the car. As I mentioned, 1,000 design changes a week, but this graph puts that into context slightly. So the dark blue line that you see is our performance over the course of the season. So we started as the quickest car, we tested as the quickest car, and ultimately we ended the season as the quickest car and we won the championship. The light blue line that you see uh, is Infinity Red Bull Racing without any development. So had we just not tested, had we sat on the laurels all season and just raced the car that we had started with, and you'll see we're pretty much at the back of the grid by the time the end of the, end of the season, the last race of the season, comes around. And I hope that underlines to you just how important that evolution is and just why we have the staff that we do in order to make sure we're constantly learning and constantly optimising. So I just want to leave you with a bit about the Infinity Performance Engineering Academy because as Tomas has mentioned, this really is a unique opportunity. Speaking to the senior engineers in our team, they are astonished that we're committing five places to this as we are and it's, it shows that so the quality we had from the applicants last year was, was very good. Eric, uh, Jason and Will, they are doing an awful lot for the business. This isn't an opportunity to come and see how we work. This is an opportunity to come and to solve our engineering challenges and to work hand in hand with some of the best engineers in the world. It's a genuine chance to, to input on the car, going faster on track. So you know, we are after people who will come in and who will contribute, who will bring ideas and will help us ultimately become faster on track. And as we mentioned, the, tr the transfer and the crossover between automotive and motorsport has never been more important. So again, having a view of both those things will put you in really good stead for the future. So I hope you do consider this, these opportunities. And of course, Tomas and I will be happy to take any questions that you have now. Thank you. So if you do have a question for either Tommaso or myself, please do raise your hand. Uh, and Gary at the front here has a cap for the first few guys who are brave enough to, to raise their hand, if that's, a, if that's a bit of motivation for you. Siete tutti così eccitati di andare subito sul website che non volete neanche chiedere la domanda. Ok, in, in that case, thank you very much for your time, guys. Um, and of course, we'll stick around afterwards, so if you'd rather ask questions one on one, please do come and say hello and approach us. We'll be happy to, to talk you through any areas of Infinity, Infinity Rebel Racing, or the Infinity Performance Engineering Academy. So actually, we've recently expanded the program to, to look at, at graduates as well. So as long as you are studying at the time of applications, which is now, we, we will take postgraduates. 
Um, generally, it's, it's preferred as a sandwich year to, to complement studies. Um, just because the, the guarantee of longer term employment is difficult for us to make and you know, we're conscious that obviously people are looking for, for longer term recruitment but we have, as I mentioned, uh, released the rules slightly on that so yeah, and anyone who's currently studying is, is eligible for the programme. The, the formula student experience is really important actually, there, there's a, there is a set of, of kind of guidelines from our side as to, as to what we're looking for through this recruitment process and we will consider non formula student engineers but ultimately we're after somebody who shows that they're willing to put their time and energy into to what it is that we're doing. As, as I've mentioned, it's really is a, a way of life working for Infinity Rebel Racing and for Infinity and, and you guys for instance have shown that you, know, you embrace that, this is work you're doing your own time and that stands you in really good stead. Um, it's not the only thing we're after. I think we would always look for somebody who shows they'll go above and beyond their studies in, in, in kind of pursuit of, of what, what it is they're after and they're looking for and they enjoy. So somebody who is working on a classic car at home, somebody who's doing, I don't know, CFD for a local company, working with anyone uh, locally, maybe doing work experience. I think anyone who can show their passion and demonstrate that beyond what's written in the paper, we, we'd always be really keen to hear from. Yeah, it's, it's quite a holistic approach we take. In terms of the regional finals themselves, we're, we're doing interviews, we're looking at, at group work, um, there is a written examination as well. So, um, yeah, it, it is quite thorough, the process. Um, obviously, once we have a shortlist, we go from there, but um, it, it is quite, uh, I'd say, quite comprehensive. Um, and obviously, in those regional finals, we'll have people from the team and from Infinity looking at each of the engineers individually on their merits, and there'll be several parts of that. It's the end of the month. Gary, can you give us a date? May 27th. Uh, the Orish project is uh, exactly the project I was mentioning before. Yeah. <clears throat> um, again, we started it as a prototype because we wanted to learn from Infinity Rebel Racing how we can improve performance on our road legal cars, and this was focused on the Q50. And we gathered a lot of information. We learned a lot. The current engineers from the Engineering Academy were actually involved also in the Rouge project. We don't have the plan to produce the car at the moment because we are finalizing the portfolio for the future. We are launching the Q30, the Q60, which is a much more a sporty car if you want. So we are at the moment planning where to apply this knowledge, uh, which might still be a Q50, but it can even be the Q60. So we, I don't have an answer, <laughs> but uh, uh, the, 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 the important thing is that we learned a lot and uh, it's something we will apply to some products in the future. Again, either the Q50 or the Q60 or both. The only answer I can give you, we won't call it Orouge. <laughs> it was just a, a project name. Altre domande? Ok. Uh, grazie a tutti per la partecipazione. Credo che... Gai ha, ha spiegato molto bene l'unicità di questo progetto e davvero, a parte la passione e l'importanza del lavoro che si fa in Formula 1, non credo che ci siano altre occasioni di fare poi lo stesso eh, stage in uh, un automotive brand. Grazie a tutti, arrivederci.